Hello, I'm Neil, and today we're going to look at this Beta 2017 Beta 350 RR engine. And just for a little bit of background, I've been working on, I'm 64 years old, and I've been working on bikes since I was 17 years old. And uh, I also have an airframe and power plant mechanics license and, and spent a lot of time working with T-56 aircraft engines. That's a military aircraft engine. But uh, today we're going to determine this, this engine's fairly low hours. And uh, it, it's failed a rod bearing because of oil starvation. And what we're going to do today is determine why that happened. Uh, the, the engine was not running low on oil. It was always full of oil, but but uh, this rod is, is loose and it's binding and it's definitely bad. And uh, on this oil system, it has uh, two, we used to call these, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can say the name right, trichoidal oil pumps. But it's got a dual pump. It's got an element on each end of this shaft. And it picks up out of a finger screen in the bottom of the case. So the oil's picked up in the bottom of the case through a finger screen. So the oil that's in the case, anything that's very large, won't go into the pump because of the screen. And it has these dual elements. So if you're leaning the bike left or right, it, it doesn't starve for oil either way. So if it falls on its side and it's laying there running, it's still picking up oil on that side. Falls on the other side, it's still picking up oil on that side. And from there, it sends the oil up basically a single passage. And you can see it on the outside of the case here where the passage is and runs up to this oil filter cavity. And this cavity on this side where the filter goes we have the the filter here fits inside of there uh, the oil goes through the outside of the filter and then through the filter into the center of the filter and comes out the an end passage which actually runs up to the top of the case and it crosses over inside it can cross over from either side and it has oil passages next to the stud bolts for the cylinder and the head and the oil runs up along those to go to the top end. Uh, but basically we're concerned with how there was no damage to the top end and we're concerned with how this rod starved for oil. <clears throat> and here we have this uh, oil nozzle which fits inside this case down inside here and this nozzle uh, actually points up and, it, and it oils at the bottom of the piston and, the right, and, the, and it shoots oil up inside and oil gets to the underside of the piston and comes down and oils the wrist pin through this slot here and also the spray uh, is what's this is where the rod is oiled is from this nozzle and oils the cylinder and the, and the bottom of the piston and the cylinder wall and the rod bearings is what this little nozzle is supposed to do. And as you can tell, it's a pretty small passage. So uh, if something got in there and plugged that, then the rod would starve for oil. And we suspect that that's why this rod failed is because of oil starvation. And we're going to try and prove how that happened. So... Uh, and the piston, he's going to show you a picture of the piston here in this video. And uh, it's got a piece broken out of the top of the piston next to the ring land. So apparently when the rod got loose, uh, the piston hit the head and cracked the land, the upper land on the piston. And cracked it and a piece broke out of it. And then, of course, it beat it around in the cylinder and blew it out. And luckily, it didn't hurt any valves or hold any valves open and, and cause some serious damage to the head. Okay, this oil filter, this is a Tusk oil filter made in China. Uh, looks like it's part number 
115-493-0081. And we have two filters here. We still have a brand new one that hasn't been used. And you can see inside it that there's, there's uh, globs of glue in there from the manufacturing. And we're going to try and cut this filter open and see what this looks like on the inside. And I don't know how smoothly this is going to go. On aircraft engines, they actually they have an actual cutter that's made to do this, and uh, a lot of piston engine aircraft engines, we call them piston pounders. They have a spin-on oil filter like a car has, so they have a they have a cutter that will cut that case open on the filter for the aircraft engine. Uh, so you can you can remove the outer housing from the from the filter without introducing any contaminants into the filter element by sawing it or or chiseling it open or something like that, and uh, because they spread these spread this whole thing out and you can see the contamination in the filter element once you do that. And actually, in aircraft, you take the, the, the stuff that's in the filter and have it analyzed, and they can tell you exactly what that is. If it's bearing material, material if it's uh, from a piston or from a gear or, a bear, or uh, different, different kinds of bearings, you know, plain bearings or roller bearings or ball bearings or whatever, whatnot. So hopefully we can easily separate this and see what's inside. I may have to cut it just a little bit better. Okay, you can see some of the glue particles here right now. But when you look at the outside, you can see all the metal that was picked up from the bottom of the case that the filter had caught. So that's basically the way to inspect an oil filter right there. And, uh, and if you really wanted to, to know what it is exactly, of course, we know that the rod bearing's bad, and we're pretty sure that's all rod bearing there. But the thing we're concerned about is all this glue. And you can see it right here. Globs of glue inside there. And when you look inside it, uh, I don't know that you can see it very well without cutting this apart. But these globs of glue have gone through these little holes. And you can see that it's that it's fairly soft and kind of stringy. And I really don't know why it was necessary to ever even put that in there to begin with. There's a nice glob right there. But what has happened here 
is this particular filter with the way it's constructed with all this glue in here uh, apparently it seems like what's happened here is that this glue has has gotten into the oil passage because the oil comes from the outside and goes to the inside of the filter then the oil supplies the bearings and so forth in the engine through this center hole and which is in the back of this case and and like we said earlier it goes up and it splits it goes to this oil nozzle and goes to the top end and also crosses over and goes to another oil nozzle which oils the timing chain so this glue had had come come loose in there and got in the oil passage and went up and blocked this nozzle and starved the rod for oil that's the only explanation that we could come up with why this engine failed like this so prematurely and shortly after an oil change this this is what's responsible for the for the damage on this engine and uh, and it's going to have to have uh, a new rod probably uh, feels like maybe one new main bearing that's got contamination in it from the metal it's going to have to have a new rod a new rod pin it's going to have to have to have a new wrist pin it's going to have to have a new piston and rings and uh, uh, the cylinder uh, we're not sure about yet if it's reusable or it, or it will need to be replated um, we don't have the cylinder here right at the moment and you probably couldn't see uh, any damage to it in a video or a picture anyway uh, it's uh, it may have gotten run run dry the piston he'll have pictures of the piston the piston has has quite a bit of scoring on the side but it but the cylinder is nitrided and it's so hard uh, apparently doesn't look like it had, it had damaged the cylinder any so there you have it that's uh what we're looking at here and uh, and like I said you can see the glue on the back side of this now, I don't understand the necessity to have glue inside a filler like that in that area I mean I could see having it on the end to glue that up inside these end caps but uh, why it's smeared all over the the, the center tube doesn't make any sense to me but I also wanted to mention that on this oil pump before we split this case and pulled this crankshaft out of the motor and uh, when it was still assembled we wanted to test the oil pump make sure there wasn't some kind of failure going on there so we actually took and poured we left the cap off of this oil filter housing and we poured a half a quart of oil inside and put a drill motor on the pump shaft and actually ran ran the pump and pumped a half a quart of oil through it and it flowed quite nicely so uh, just to to prove that there, there wasn't a problem with the oil pump uh, we did that beforehand and also uh, going by by measurements and an obvious visual inspection there's no damage to the oil pump uh, there's there's some slight rubbing from the metal particles that did get through the screen that it picked up but nothing that's uh, caused wear to the point that it would would cause any kind of oil pump failure or cause any lack of capacity for the oil pump. There you have it. It's what happened to a 350RR motor for oil starvation.